Hey, what is going on guys? RJ at Stealth here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a tier list for every single role for patch 10.3. So if we started off here up in the top lane, a moment of silence for Akali because she's just pretty much dead now in patch 10.3. I don't really know what Ride's trying to do with this champion at this point. It just seems like the champion is going to need some sort of like a revert or something like that. Like the rework to Akali, it feels like it's never going to work no matter what they do. So in this coming patch here, if you want to climb, I'd probably just stay away from Akali now because she is going to be one of the weakest champions in the game. Now we do have two new champions here up in the top lane in the S tier that have kind of popped up over the past two or three patches here being Soraka and Sona and they're making their way into the S tier for this patch. Now the reasons to why these champions are so strong, for Soraka you do have very good matchups up in the top lane, you scale really well into the mid game, you got your global ultimate there so you can be sitting top lane with Soraka, you can, at level 6 you can use your ultimate down bot lane to help them win the 2v2 and it pretty much just gives your bot lane an extra couple hundred uh couple hundred health which really helps them out when they are looking to duel and if your jungler's looking to have a 3v3 down bot side then Soraka's ultimate can have a very large impact. She also does scale really nicely into the mid game there. You're going to be getting a lot more farm, obviously. If you're playing Soraka top lane, you're going to be CSing. So you're going to hit a nice mid game spike there. You're going to hit 40% CDR really early on into the game. So it just allows your team fight in the mid game to be very strong. And then for Sona, it's kind of a completely different strategy than Soraka. Like, yes, it's another support up in the top lane, but with the Sona, I did make a separate video on this. It's a really unique strategy, so I definitely recommend taking a look at that video. I'll probably leave an annotation on screen here if I do remember it, but basically a TLDR is that you take the Spell Thieves on the Sona, you proc your Spell Thieves a ton in the laning phase, you don't take a ton of CS, and then at level 6, you just look to roam around the map and you look to influence the map. So it's a really weird strategy, but it's a very strong strategy like there is some there is a grandmaster there's a challenger player over on EUS that is spamming this right now and having really good success with it and then not too much else that's really notable up in the top lane for 10.3. Meta is going to stay pretty stable as to where it was last patch. Set is getting a couple different nerfs in this patch to his W, so the cooldown's being increased, the base damage is being lowered. I don't think that's going to be enough though to drop him out of S tier. Last patch he had like a, a bug going on to where it was increasing his win rate by a ton. After they fixed the bug, he's still doing extremely good up in the top lane, so I guess it wasn't affecting him too much, and right now it's even with the nerfs, like I don't think it's going to be enough to really drop him out of S tier. Rumble is getting a nerf in this patch to his W, the move speed, along with the shielding, and it really sucks for top lane Rumble players because he's already not the greatest top laner right now. He's a much better mid lane pick, so the fact that he's getting nerfed for mid lane is also going to affect him up in the top lane, so he's still going to stay in B tier. I don't think it's going to drop him down into C tier, but he is going to be one of the relatively weaker top lane picks now. So moving on to the jungle now, like the top lane, not too many super big changes, no changes that are really going to drastically shift the meta. Echo is getting a change to the amount of damage he does with his passive to monsters from 200% down to 150%, so it's a decent nerf, but I don't think it's going to be enough to drop him out of S tier. He's an extremely good jungler at the moment, he's got a very high pick rate, very high win rate, and I just don't think that change will be enough to drop him down into A tier, so expect the S tier champions to be pretty much the same as to what they were in 10.2. Sejuani is the other jungler getting a direct buff in this patch, her attack speed at level 1 going from 0% up to 10%, so that's really going to increase her clear speed for 10.3 here, and it's going to make her at least a B tier pick now. I think Sejuani with the buff she received a couple patches ago, and the buff now in this patch is going to make her at least a viable jungler for 10.3. Nothing special, but if you do want to pick her up, if you do want to play a tank jungler, then she's not going to be completely terrible anymore for this patch. And then with the jungle XP changes, I just don't think it's going to be enough to really bump up any farming junglers or anything like that. A lot of people might have thought that you're going to see like Karthus become S tier now in the coming patch. It's going to make them a little bit stronger. It will make farming junglers a little bit stronger, that's for sure. But I don't think the changes are drastic enough to really bump a champion up a whole tier. I still think the jungle XP changes are pretty small and it's only going to, it's only going to increase the amount of XP you get throughout the game by a little bit. So it's not going to be enough to move certain champions up a full tier for 10.3. 
And then if we move over to the mid lane now, there are a lot of different champions getting some buffs and nerfs in this patch, but it's not really going to change the placing of where they are on the tier list. Diana is getting a base mana decrease in this coming patch. Her W damage is also being reduced, so those changes are somewhat significant, but because of how strong Diana is right now in 10.2, it's not going to bump her out of S tier down into A tier. She's going to need at least one more little nerf in order to bump her down into A tier in my opinion. Now for Akali, she's also going to be very weak in the mid lane for 10.3, so both top lane and mid lane Akali, I would be completely staying away from her if you are looking to climb. We are seeing those nerfs to Rumble as well, and Rumble is really going to be on the bubble for this patch. These changes could definitely drop him down into A tier. He's going to be like in between an A and S tier pick in my opinion, because with the changes, it's not going to affect his easy matchups. Matchups that he already smashes in the mid lane, he's still going to smash them for 10.3, but it's really going to affect his harder matchups, his ability to sustain in those kind of matchups. So matchups to where he can get poked out pretty easily in the laning phase to where he can get bullied. The extra or the reduced shielding there on the W, it is going to affect him along with that reduced movement speed. It's going to limit his ability to dodge out on those skill shots as easy as he could in previous patches. Both Corky and Azir are getting buffed again here for 10.3, so I'm pretty sure they got buffed last patch or maybe the patch before, and the changes in this patch here to Azir, I think they are somewhat significant. His mana at level 1 there is getting increased. He's also getting an ultimate buff to the width of his ultimate, so I think those changes are pretty good for Azir. With the changes he did get in last patch and now with the changes in this patch here, I do think he is going to be a B tier mid lane pick. Now, he's not going to be anything special. He's not going to be an A tier, an S tier pick or anything, but... I think that if you can play a really good Azir, if you can play him to his fullest potential, then he's going to be at least somewhat viable now for 10.3. You know, with the Corky changes there, he's getting a buff to his special delivery damage per second, and I just don't think this buff is really going to matter too much. Like, Corky's passive there, the special delivery, it's not going to be, it's not the reason to why he's, like, not meta right now or anything. Like, buffing that, even if they gave it, like, a super big buff, I still don't think it would really bring him back into the meta, so I feel like he needs some sort of a buff to his base AD, bump that back up a little bit again, because when they ended up bumping his base AD down a while ago, that's really the buff or that's really the nerf that ended up killing him. And then Galio is the final champion getting a direct buff in the mid lane. So his Q Tornado duration from 1.5 seconds up to 2. And then Q Tornado damage ticks from 3 up to 4. So not going to be enough in my opinion to bump him up into A tier. He's still going to remain a pretty weak B tier pick. Overall for the mid lane though, Assassins are still going to be dominating for 10.3. So playing your Fizz, your Talon, your Katarina. Going to be very good solo queue picks here for yet another patch. There's a lot of things that are great right now in the mid lane. I think you can have success with multiple different mid lane picks right now. The meta is just wide open in the mid lane. So any of those A tier picks as well there, if you pick them up, if you play them well, you can do really well on them for 10.3. So moving on to AD carry now, this is the role that gets the most amount of changes or it gets the most amount of meta shift here for 10.3. So we do see a couple new champions like popping up over the past few patches here being Talia and Soraka. So Talia especially, very strong carry pick in the AD carry role in quotations. I guess you're playing her like as an AP carry, but if you can pair Talia up with any good aggressive support and especially if you can duo Q down in the bot lane with this Talia, then you can completely smash lane. If you can play her with something like a Pantheon's a very good synergy because Pantheon W into Talia W is a free one shot. If you can play her with even a meta support like Leona, Nautilus, Blitzcrank, a hook or just a CC chain into the Talia combo is guaranteed kills in the laning phase. So really interesting pick right now. Very niche pick but a very strong one as well. And then for Soraka, a new pick here in this role that you can have some really good success with. Soraka is a great pick right now in the top lane in the support role and as an AD carry. Obviously, you're not going to build her with AD items. You're still going to build her exactly as to how you would build a support, but with the Soraka pick, you have a very strong laning phase. If you pair her up with another support, something like a Senna is a really good synergy right now. You have a great laning phase. You're going to be getting your items a lot faster on this pick, so you scale really nicely into the mid game there, and she's a very easy champion to execute, easier than any AD carry in the game, and you're always going to be useful on the pick, even if you do end up falling behind. 
And then for the A tier champions there, for Caitlyn, I did underestimate how much the nurse would affect her in last patch from the Stormraiser changes along with the Cloak of Agility changes. She was one of the only AD carries who pretty much every single game would like to go for that like 100% crit build. So because they did end up nerf nerfing that in last patch, it actually hit her a little bit more than I expected. So she is dropping down into A tier here for 10.3. I'm pretty sure she also did get a bug fix in last patch or a change to where you can't do a certain combo on her anymore so for really experienced Caitlyn players that also did hurt them there in last patch. Now Senna is getting a nerf in this patch to her soul drop rate on cannons. It's being lowered from 100% down to just 1.67%. So it's pretty much just means you're not going to be getting any souls from cannons in this coming patch here. I think that she's going to need one more change in order to drop her out of S tier though. Right now I'd say she's the best AD carry you can play for solo queue in 10.2. So in 10.3 here, it's going to affect her a little bit. She's now going to be on the same level in my opinion as the other S tier champions. And then we're finally seeing Riot put some sort of attack speed back into Ezreal's kit. His attack speed per level is getting increased from 1.5% up to 2.5%, so a 1% increase there. Mana per level is also getting increased from 42 up to 50, so Ezreal is now going to be jumping up into B tier. I still think that you should really only play this champion if you main him, if you one trick him. He's a much more difficult champion to execute than most other AD carries in the game, so unless you can really play him at a high level, I still Still don't think he's going to be worth picking up over an A tier or an S tier champion. Misfortune is getting a nerf in this patch to her attack speed per level going from 3 down to 2.25 so you're going to be missing out on 0.75% attack speed per level so once you do hit the mid game you're going to notice this a little bit there but I think that at the very most you could just swap over to alacrity in this coming patch here if you're really missing out on that attack speed but even then Misfortune isn't really an AD carry that needs attack speed as much as other AD carries if you can just like hit your Q in team fights if you can just get a multi-man ult and off even if you had zero attack speed you could still be useful on this champion and then lastly, to round it out here, for the support role, only three significant changes really. One to Leona, her W damage is being lowered there, more so at the later rank, so it's going to be off by 20 once you get it maxed out. It's still going to be the same at rank 1 there, so the first couple levels in the laning phase as Leona, you're still going to have the same amount of damage, you're still going to have the same amount of snowball potential. Your E damage, it is being decreased by 10 at rank 1, so that is a bit more significant, losing a bit of damage there in your all-in in the early game. But I think overall, Leon is still going to be a great pick for 10.3, going to still be an S tier champion. And then for Sona, she's actually getting nerfed in this patch. It turned out that the changes she got last patch were actually more significant than I thought. She was, she had a very high win rate in 10.2, so she is getting nerfed here in 10.3. Self movement speed on her E is being reduced there. I think it's just being reduced uh, back to where it was before. So she is still going to be an A tier pick now in 10.3 down in the support role. And then the other support getting some changes in this patch is Yumi. She's getting some buffs to her Q and then some nerfs to her E along with a bug fix or a quality of life change to her W. So overall, I think it's going to be pretty power neutral. I don't think that the changes are really going to bump her up too much in this patch. Might bump her up a little bit, but she's still going to remain a C slash B tier pick for 10.3. And then I am going to be bumping Lulu up into S tier. So Lulu is like a borderline S tier pick in my opinion right now, but I am going to be bumping her up into S tier for this patch because she did get direct buffs in last patch. Also with Leona and Nautilus getting nerfed in the past two patches here. That's really good for Lulu as well. She is one of the better enchanter supports that you can play into more aggressive supports because especially once you hit the level six there, you got really good peel potential in your kit with Lulu. You can do a great job at stopping those dive champions from getting on top of your AD carry or getting on top of yourself so I think for the meta that we're in right now Lulu is a very strong support pick. All right, so that's going to be all for the video, guys. That was a tier list for every single role for patch 10.3. So hopefully this does give you a pretty good idea of what's going to be strong here for the coming patch, what's going to be weak right now. So if you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you have yet to already. So thanks for watching. Have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.